Hey guys, it's Katie, and tonight we're going to work on something that someone asked about and that they were having trouble doing. I've never done it. I've looked at pictures of them, so I'm going to attempt it. It'll be a semi-translucent cane, and ultimately it's going to be a water drop. And it's going to be more, again, more of an accent cane. I wouldn't say this would be your whole uh, one, but... It'll be pretty cool looking. Um, you can do it completely translucent. You could even tint it a little bit. That might be cool. Maybe we'll do that. We'll tint it a little blue. Oh, yeah, that'll be fun. So first thing you need to get is some translucent. And if we're going to tint it, I'm going to get some gloves. You're also going to need some black and white. And I definitely wipe down your pasta machine a little bit because you don't want to um, get any junk in your clay as much as possible. So I'm not going to work in a huge amount. I've never made this. I don't want to make a huge batch of it because I don't know how this is going to turn out like most of my first time canes and that's what most of them are. They I've never usually used or done any of the ones I haven't. I've posted. They're all usually my first time doing them and I record it and if the flower or whatever looks good I'll post it. And so most of the time, I'm just winging them. So I'm going to do that with this. So I have some translucent here, and I'm going to grab my alcohol inks. And I need to pick a light blue, but I also need a pair of gloves. Mainly because I don't want to get alcohol inks all over my fingers. So these are my um, gloves that I have from Dental Hygiene School. Uh, the brand is Halyard. H-A-L-Y-A-R-D. They're lavender nitrile powder-free exam gloves. I wear extra small gloves, um, which fit my hands well because I have small hands. So I'm going to want like a nice light blue. And I just want a tiny bit. Let's see. Sailboat blue might work because that's a nice pale blue. Um, let's see what else do I got here. Pool might work. That's kind of a greeny. Ooh. Aqua. I think I'm going to go with the aqua. Yep, I think I'm going to go with aqua. And I'm only going to put like a drop on this. I do not want a lot of color on this. I really just want to lightly tint it. So, boop, done. <laughs> That's it. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to spread it out. This may or may not show up well. I just want to slightly, maybe one more drop. Whoa, what is falling down on my thing? Boop, okay, let's try that. I just want a slight blue tint to this water droplet because I, if I put it on a colored background, I don't want it to mess with the color. That should be enough. I just want to slightly tint it. You can tint more. Play with it as you as you will. Um, have fun. Experiment. So I'm going to let that dry for just a sec, which because I only added a tiny little bit, it almost is. So I'm going to mix it in, and I'm going to mix it by hand, not with my pasta machine, because I do not want to get alcohol ink in my pasta machine. It's definitely not something you want to try to clean out. So you're better off until it's almost fully incorporated, just doing it by hand. I'm just going to roll it out, and this will condition it as I'm doing it. So I'm just going to mix this in, again, just very lightly tinting it. I tend to use Primo White Translucent. Um, sorry, my fiance is coming down. Because that's my favorite translucent to use, so I don't even use the other translucent. Mainly, the white translucent I find has a, a different tone than the regular Primo translucent when you bake it. It's really hard to explain, but get a little pack of each and check them out and see what one you prefer. This is just the one I prefer, so, you know, it's definitely not the only one you can use. You can use other brands. Um, for me, Primo's easier to find. Even though I can't even find it local, I order it, but it's easier to find online for me in the U.S. Um, so I'm going to get this mixed in. I can still see it's kind of marbled. I'm going to get it mixed in, and then I'll be done with that. Okay, that one's the one I did, and really you can't even honestly tell much of a difference between the regular and the one I added a little blue to. One of them, I ripped it in half, and one of them I'm going to add a tad bit more, and I'm going to keep them as two separate, like I'm doing, these are two different colors. So I'm going to add maybe a little pool to this other one. Just a tiny, I don't want a lot of color in this stuff. 
Just, oh yeah, that's a good color. Just a little bit. I don't really want my water droplets to be blue or green. I just want a little hint of something rather than just plain translucent. So I'm going to mix this one in as well just by squishing it together, getting it to work. And that's really not a lot. I mean, one drop is not a lot. Tinting polymer clay with um, alcohol inks is a nice way to tint translucent clay or white clay even. You can totally tint clays with alcohol inks. It works really well. Um, it doesn't seem to, at least the Ranger and the Pinata um, alcohol inks don't seem to mess with the clay. Because some products that if you use, you know, after 6, 8, 12 months can make your projects begin to get a weird sticky film on the outside. It kind of reacts with the polymer clay. Um, like some spray on varnishes can do that. Um, some kind of paints, different things can do that. So you really want to test your products. You know, if you're not sure, use one of the beads that are, came out bad and put something on it and let it sit for a while. You know, you definitely want to sit, let it sit for, I'd say, a couple months to be sure that you're not going to get any weird reactions. Okay, so here are two parts. So that one's a little bit different than this one, and I think that will be fine. I rolled them both out of my thickest setting. So ultimately, we're going to create a rectangle right now. And how do I want to do this? I don't want to cut any of this. I do want to use it all. So let me just kind of force it into a rectangle. And we're going to put like translucent in the middle. Okay, and then we're going to add some black and we're going to add some white to kind of the ends. Not really the ends, but kind of the ends. Okay, so like that. And then up here in the corners, we're going to kind of cut a little, and I don't want to remove a lot of this because I want to use what I have. I'm going to cut like a U shape or a semicircle like that. I want to use all of this clay, so I'm trying to figure out. Straighten this part off a little bit. Like that, and I want that U shape there. And let me taper that a little bit more. Sorry, I made that too. Put a little bit there, and then maybe a little bit down here. And Skinner blends are fairly free. Okay, so that's my translucent. You do not need to do the colors. If anything, just make a rectangle of translucent. Okay, if you're nervous about this, just make a rectangle of translucent. Um, the ones I've seen just had plain translucent. They didn't do this alcohol ink thing, but I wanted to tint it, so why not try, right? I'm practicing anyways. I'm going to get out some black, and I'm going to get out some white, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have a little sheet of black. It's all rolled out of my thickest setting of my pasta machine, a size zero. And we're going to stick this black. We're going to make kind of like a U-shape out of this as well. So let me... Let me just do it this way. So we're going to kind of fill in the black here. Okay, from like here over to about here. Okay, to about here. We don't want them touching the black and the white in the middle. Okay, so it'll make a sense in a minute. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. Pretty much. Sorry, my fiance just shut the light on me. I'm just going to light off on me. I'm just going to try to fit it in here. Ultimately, maybe I'll make... Again, I'm working this out, so I'm not... This is not something I practiced. If you don't see it, guess what? It didn't work out, and I didn't post it. Okay, I'm going to stick that there. I'm going to bring it around. I definitely want to cut it off. We're making a rectangle because we're making a Skinner blend. So I'm going to cut it something like this. I'll cut it more in a second, but let me just get some of this excess gone. And I want to put a little bit of black up here. And I want to cut this off here. I don't like 
myself personally, which is why you guys see I do the teardrop Skinner blends. Um, I'm not a big fan of making these triangles. I feel like it's a lot of work for a Skinner blend, but in this case, I'm going to do it. Okay, that looks about good. So it gets a little thinner here and a little thinner here, and then we have this corner. We're going to do the same thing with the white. Okay, like this. So let me just cut a little U shape. Let me get rid of this. A little U shape out of this guy. Like. Sorry, top of your screen. Boop. Get a little white out of there. We're going to fit him in here. Only about up to there. And then I'll cut this one straight up. And I'll cut this one even with, well, not quite even, just a little bit above like that. So we have a little thin strip on the top there. Oh, I got a little pasta machine gunk on there. But that's what happens when you, right the first time you clean it. I will use that up here. I want it just a little bit. Well, maybe that's too too dirty. Scrap clay. Maybe a little bit more. But you don't want your two touching. So just kind of piece it all together and I need a little bit more right there. Okay, so there's our Skinner blend. And first I'm just gonna need my bigger roller. I need a new acrylic roller because this guy's got like a layer on it that I can't seem to get off. Okay, I'm gonna, you know, no matter what I use to clean it. I'm gonna roll that out a little bit. And I am working on a matte tile, which makes it very difficult for me to pick clay off um, off of my tile. So if you see me struggling, that's why, because I'm working on this matte tile and it kind of has a light texture to it. And if I push too hard with my blade and you're pushing on the clay, it'll slide. So next thing I'm going to do is just roll it down straight down these two touching the rollers first so if it was going if my fingers are the rollers it's going to go down in like this so down towards my table is going down towards my roller with the two translucents touching or your one translucent just to lengthen this a little bit on my thickest setting it might not do anything okay so now it's an all one even setting i actually need to add just a hair of black right there just so my line's even. And Skinner blends and stuff like with polymer clay are great like that because you can really manipulate it. Okay. And I'm going to take it down. I want it a little longer. So I'm going to take it down. So I use an Atlas 150 just to let you know. It's a great pasta machine. Yes, it costs a little money, but I spent, what, 40 bucks on a cheap one, and it died within three months, and it was junk. So, you know, spending a little extra money on a pasta machine, mine doesn't have a motor, um, is really worth it, I feel. Now that I, I have a decent one, I would, if it breaks, I'd spend the money on it again. Um, but it's, it is a pasta one. It's not like that cool one that um, other people have that's meant for polymer clay, but it's an atlas that are made by someone, I don't know his name, um, it looks easier to clean. I've seen it on other tutorials. Uh, I think it was Polymer Clay TV had had it, uh, possibly. Maybe I'm wrong. So, anyways, size zero is the thickest setting on mine. Nine is the thinnest setting. Now, a zero and a one are almost identical on mine, okay? So, I'm going to go down to a two. But I would take it down to your next setting. If you don't have an Atlas 150 and say zero is your thickest, go down to the one. Okay, but in all purposes, my one and zero are the same. So I'm going to go down to a two, same way, putting these two in the rollers first. And I know this part's taking a minute, but this part is actually important in this one. 
okay? And then we're gonna begin folding. Now you're not folding black on top of white. No, not like this. Bad, you're gonna get the wrong thing. We're gonna be folding translucent up to the white and up to the black corner, just like this, okay? And then we're gonna put it in our pasta machine down, because you always want one thing too. When you're putting it through, say my fingers are my pasta machine, right? My rollers. You want, as it's going through, and it's going through, you want the rollers to be able to push the air out, okay? So if your crack's at the top, it'll push all the air out. If you were to put it in this way, as it's going down through the rollers, you know, you're putting it in, all the air is gonna get trapped in this seam, if this makes sense. I know it's confusing, but you wanna put it in, and for this one, you wanna put it in this way. Your white and your black are at the top. It's hard to explain it on this one because it's kind of weird. So I'm gonna roll it through on that same size two setting, just like this, okay? And then we're gonna keep step, we're gonna keep going over and over and over, just like a regular Skinner blend. Now I am, because it is getting long and short, and I hate that, I'm gonna start scrunching in my edges to make it a little longer this way and smaller that way. So this is, I've showed it in other tutorials, I scrunch up my edges. Okay, and I'm showing this one because this is important for this tutorial. It's not really, I don't know, it is important. Because it's, it's, it is a weird kind of Skinner blend. It's not really a Skinner blend, but it kind of is a Skinner blend, but not a full Skinner blend. It's just kind of confusing. And because it's really long, my ends are going to get longer, but that's okay. We will work it out as it starts to mix in. It will fix itself up. And I do rotate it each time I'm putting in my pasta machine. So if one way this side's facing me, the next time this side will be facing me. And also, when I was new, I didn't know if I should fold all the way up to the tippies of those. I do fold all the way up to the tops of those as much as I can. Right now, it's the middle's getting narrower, so as much as you can, if you get a little weird point like this, and in this blend we're going to, because we have different clay on the outside, so it's going to move at different rates, um, you do want to try to fold up to the, the points to reincorporate that clay. So I'm just kind of scrunching it up, and I may scrunch it up in the middle a little bit too, just by pushing it together in the middle here to get the middle to kind of blend one of the translucents to the other translucent, just like that. And each time I do that, it'll start to go in this way, and then I have more to fold, if that makes sense. It's harder. It's really hard to explain some of this stuff. Now I could fast forward this part uh, pretty easily, but I think in this cane it is actually going to be quite important. And I feel like I would get confused if someone didn't show me this. So, And I've never seen it. I've never seen anybody make one of these. I've just seen pictures of them. And I'm just like a lot of my flowers. I've seen pictures on Google and whatever else. And I was like, oh, I want to try to make a flower, flower like that. That's all I'm doing. I'm not using anybody's tutorial. I've never seen anybody's tutorial on this. I really have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just kind of going from what I know from polymer clay and winging it. So see how it's gotten shorter this way, and now I have more to fold, not just this little thing. And that's just from scrunching it up each time. But I don't want the black and white to touch. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm just gonna keep doing the same thing. Now that it's quite blended, I'm sure you guys can figure it out. Um, from here, you've seen a whole bunch of them. I'm just gonna keep doing the same thing till I get kind of an even blend in here. I probably won't scrunch any more than pretty much this size because I don't want the black and white to touch in the middle. I want to leave the translucent in the middle. So don't scrunch it up. Definitely have a gap of translucent. So from here, I can see white 
to here and black to here, and I don't want more than that. It doesn't really ha matter how much translucent you have in the middle, but you need a solid layer of translucent. Now, if you have an issue, I hope I remember, maybe I'll write myself a note. If you have an issue with that, I can show you that in a second. Translucent. Not. These are my directions for myself. Enough. This is my book. If you've never seen my book in any of my tutorials, this is my book. I take end canes and bake them, and then I put them in. So this is Jessima Designs, or Samantha Burroughs' Cherry Blossom. Um, this is my rose cane. This is my flip it flower, I called it. Two different ones. Uh, my buttercup flower. And that was one I was going to do. That was an idea I had. I haven't done it yet. Here's some translucent canes I made. Um, here's my brain cane. Um, it's my lake leaf and flower. Here's a flower. Here's a barbed cane flower. I haven't done that one yet because I want to play with it a little bit more. And I wasn't happy with that. Um, here's that that's that lace one that I just did the um, Bargello and lace. This was just the end cane, so it looks goofy. Here's just a Skinner Blend Bullseye. You know, they're the end cane, so they look distorted, but that way in the future, if I'm trying to think of things to put on a project, I can look back and go, oh yeah, I did that. I like that one. Here's one I did. I wasn't really thrilled with it, but I did it. I don't think I did a tutorial. I was going to do a tutorial, and I recorded it, and then I was like, I don't like that flower. So I may modify it later. This one you guys can see is a little dark. That one's a tutorial. Um, that's an idea I have. That's an idea. This is off of Valerie's um, photo she posted on my Facebook page. And she posted a picture and we were both inspired to make a project. And I think I just posted that. And that was my end cane. These are some ideas of canes I have to do in the future. And this is today's. And if it works, we'll put it there. But I'll make myself a note. If you don't have enough translucent or if your colors happen to touch, I'll try to figure out a way to fix that. When we're on to the next step. So blend, blend, blend. Hopefully they don't touch. If they do, we'll deal with it later. And I'll be back. Because it's already 22 minutes in and that's all we've done. So it's not yet done yet. I really want to get this nicely blended, but it's starting to get short when I fold it again. So I'm going to start scrunching it up again. Then I'll roll it. If it starts to get like this again, then I'll um, scrunch it up again. But I don't want to do it to where my colors blend in the middle. And I still have a nice gasp of that translucent. Even though this one's a little blue and that one's not, that's fine. Um, because it's still ultimately translucent. It's just tinted. And did you see how it had evened off now that I stopped scrunching it? So it will even off, even though it's it does this weird thing at first from scrunching it. But as long as you fold up to those points like that, it will even itself off. Though I didn't just scrunch this this time. I don't know why I don't like it to get... I, I like to have more to fold, I guess. I don't know why I prefer to keep it a smaller little log or a little sheet then let it get really long and like this short it's harder to fold for me so I know there's a lady on my page and if she's one-handed you could probably hold with these fingers and push down you know that way and then flip it and hold and push and hold and push to scrunch it a little bit and even if you're scrunching it in the middle you could probably just push like that though you probably get pretty good one-handed like that. I mean, obviously it's going to be slower going if you only have use of one hand. I mean, that's just kind of the nature of the beast. And unfortunately is going to be. Okay. So I'm almost done. I'm going to continue rolling this. And um, I will be back when I'm done. And I'll see you in a couple secs. Seconds, I should say. Not sec. Okay, so I'm happy with this. It's fairly blended out. I don't want it to continue to go much further. The white's fairly blended. I'm fairly happy with this. The next thing, just like with any canes, we need to make a long, thin strip, okay? And the way I'm gonna do that is by cutting it in half, roughly in half, okay? And I'm gonna stack it, the black on the black and the white on the white. 
I need my cut end to my cut end. I don't know why. I just find a straight edge to a straight edge is easier. Okay, like that. I'm going to cut this little piece off and put it on the black because we might as well use it. All right? We did all that work to get this color, so we might as well use it. Now that was something like, where does this color go? Seems like it's up a little higher. Like, right here. So let me put that kind of right here where it matches the colors. Because I want it to match, if not a little low. A little low meaning the black more on that way. I don't want the black to go way up. Okay, and then we're going to run this through our pasta machine on our thinnest usable setting. If yours is really thick, um, roll it out by hand or stretch it a little bit by hand to thin it out, just like we've done other canes. Right now I can back down, because I was doing this on a setting two, I can back down to zero. So let me put it through on my zero. And I am putting in black side first, that way if I have any gunk in my pasta machine, hopefully it'll stick to here and not to here. So I'm going to put it in on my setting zero, elongating it, making this a long thin strip just like we do when we're going to roll it or when we're going to fan fold it, okay? So right now it's quite sticky, it's quite warm here today, so take it down to your thinnest usable setting. Um, everybody's is going to be different depending on the day, the time of year, what kind of whatever. So take it down to your thinnest usable setting because you don't want it all sticking together because once it sticks together as it's coming out the other side, it's hard. The other thing that will make a difference is if you have a motor. If you have a motor on your machine and you can have one hand to feed it in and one hand to grab it, you're going to be able to get it thinner. If you're cranking and you only have one hand to feed it in, you're not going to be able to get it as thin. So, you know, that plays a role as well. The other thing is some pasta machines, if I went right down to my thinnest setting, it would chew this up. It would crack it. It would not really crack it, but it would like peel it. Um... So I can't go down to my thinnest setting. I know that about my machine. Um, take just a piece of clay and try it. Put it in at your thickest setting and then put it right down to your thinnest and see what it does. I jump. I can do more than one. So right now, rather, I'm at a zero. I wouldn't go to a one. I'd go to a two. And then I'd go to a four. And then I'd go to a six. And maybe then a seven. Just because I'm getting so thin then. So I'll be back when I have a nice, long, thin strip. And keep your extra black and white because we'll need that in a sec. Or get a little bit out. Crap, I forgot to tell you what to do if your black and your white got too close together and started mixing in the middle. I'm sorry, I forgot. So, let me just draw it. Just in case, because it may happen to someone. So, right when we, before we just elongated this, we cut it in half, right? And we had on one end black, we had on one end white. What I would say to do is cut it, or not like that. Cut it down the middle. Get some translucent roll down on whatever that setting is and stick it in here. You know, stick a sheet of it in here and then have your rest go on either end. And that way you have some translucent in the middle and then roll it out on your thinnest setting. You know, so the middle part here where I have translucent, I would insert some more. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is fan fold this. And I just put some parchment because I let it sit for a second and I don't want to have it stick together. So we're going to begin fan folding this so we have one color on one side and one color on the other side. Now I would start with your light color first because we're going to do something with the dark color. Okay? So what we're going to be doing... Oh crap. Sticking together. Oops. Stop. 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 Don't you love this in the summertime? Okay. Hang on. Let me pull my sweatshirt up so I can drape it over my arm. Okay, Clay. Cooperate. I'm doing a video here. Hang on, let me set my ends down. It's really hard too because the camera's right in front of me and it makes it hard for me to actually like manipulate my clay. Okay. And to show you, because normally I would just, I wouldn't even worry about this end, I would just go for it. So let me stretch mine out here. And I'm going to fan fold slightly differently than I usually do. So I'm actually just going to pick this end up and do it in the air until it gets a little shorter because it's a little finicky right now. I 
guess another way you can fan fold. I don't usually do it like this, but I'm having trouble with it sticking being that long. Okay, now I should be able to do it. And I usually jump it from hand to hand. So I use, I'm holding it in this hand right now, folding it, and then I'm going to flop it to the other arm. Still a little arm long because the camera is literally like six inches from my table and about three inches from my face. So it's kind of in the way of where my hands would be working. Get to my other hand here. And the clay's so sticky. If it was midwinter, you wouldn't really struggle with this, but because it's July and in Vermont here in Northeast US it was 90 degrees today which is really hot for us because we get down to negative 30 in the winter so a lot of times I'm kind of near Massachusetts um, New Hampshire and that little region New York but New York City is like seven hours away I'm talking like Plattsburgh Canada is like an hour away Montreal at least Okay, so we're fan folding. Do not go all the way up to your black because we need to do something there before we get to the last little piece of our dark. And obviously when you're doing canes and you're new to canes, the more clay you use, the easier it is to like cut petals and make certain designs because it's not so finicky being little. But I don't like to waste clay and I don't usually make more than maybe five of each project so I also don't need tons of repetitive flowers and different things like I made a huge leaf cane that I showed you in my brain cane flower and I have no clue what I'm going to do with all that honestly I'll probably mix it up and use that color okay so now that we're almost to the end here we need some white we do need some white but I need to think of how I'm going to set this in here. So if we're looking at it like this, right? Give me a second. I have to think for one quick second before I tell you anything. We have it. This is how we were folding it. We're going to stand it up like this now, okay? Or you can keep it laid down. It doesn't really matter. We have a little tail here to fold over the top. So we're going to roll out a little log of white. Okay. And a part of this, we need two logs, really. We need one smaller than the other. So let me cut out one, and this is going to be the smaller one. I'm just going to roll out a little skinny log here. Okay. And I'm just going to slightly flatten it so it's kind of oval. I'm going to roughly cut to this length. So it's kind of like roughly an oval shape. But this, you know, don't don't get too freaked out about this part. Just make kind of a round shape. And we're going to stick this in over here, kind of on the edge. It's almost on the edge. This is my edge right here. So we're going to stick this one in here. And it's okay if part of it's gets skinnier than the other or whatever. Just make sure it goes your full length. I have a dog here right there. Okay, so let me pick this up so it looks like that. Okay, it's not completely on my edge, but it's a little over from it. The next one we need to be a little fatter. So I'm going to take some white. I'm going to again roll it into a sausage. Uh, maybe need a little bit more. Just needs to be a little fatter than that. And that one, this one, we're going to taper it in a second. So I'll roll out a fatter sausage. Whew, there's a fruit fly. Where did that come from? Okay, now with this sausage, I want to flatten one side of it like this. Just so it's kind of like a round on one end, flat on the other. So let me pick it up. Well, let me cut the ends off so you can actually see what the shape is. And again, don't over freak about this either. Like that. So roll a sausage and just take your finger and with one end flatten it off. And we're gonna stick this in here with the fat side going towards 
our other one. and cut that off, okay? And then we're gonna fold this guy back over. And I'm gonna take something, something round, paintbrush, whatever, and kind of smush this black down in here just to get the air out. I'm gonna smush that one down. And then I may take a black log and stick it in there just to hold that space like a really little skinny black log just so these two don't mush together too much the two whites in there I want them to stay separate but this is also a translucent black so I may take bear with me again we're working this out so on this black here this little log of black I'm going to take a tiny little bit of translucent because this black isn't pure this end is kind of but all of this is to me like a grayish tone I don't know if you can see the difference between them. So you can tell there's some translucent in there. So I'm going to take a little piece of translucent and mix it in with this black to make this black slightly more translucent. So I don't just have a black streak in my thing. And I, again, I don't know how this is going to come out quite. So I may mention at the end something I would have done differently and that way you can do it. When I do tutorials, like videos off of tutorials, I tend to watch the whole video first, and then if I remember it, I'll just do it, and if I don't, I'll watch it step for step and do it with it, but I usually run through it first. Okay, I'm gonna stick that just right in between those two. That way it keeps them separate when we reduce, like that. And then I'm gonna fold the rest of it as much as I can over the top like that see what we got here I'll stretch that so the whites closed so this is what we have okay and now I'm just gonna give it a little squish so everything's even on the sides at least not on the top and bottom yet there's a little bit of white on there okay now we need to make this a circle and use your fingers, you know, even though that's a diamond, use your fingers. So we want to start pushing in the corner. I'm only doing the bottom corner right now and starting to make it round. Make sure you flip it. You want to try to keep this down here, this whiter color down here. It's kind of like a translucent white. See how I'm making that round? I am pulling it up just a little bit up the side, but not, not much. Okay, and then we're going to pull the black down a little bit too, and make that round. Definitely flip, look at both sides. Okay, and now we have ultimately kind of a circle. And I'm just going to do a gentle roll in my hand, or on the tile, so that way I have more of a circle. Just like that. All right, that's not too hard. I think the hardest part about that was the Skinner blend. Okay, this is still some translucent black. Okay, the next thing we need to do is take some more black, and again, we need to make it slightly translucent. So maybe one part translucent to, I don't know. God, I don't even know how to give you guys mixes because I don't do anything official. So let's see. This is the ball I have in my hand. I don't have anything to give you a comparison to. Oh, pill, here's a pill bottle. I would assume most pill bottles are the same. That's the book. Here's a chapstick. Okay, so just a round ball. I'm not being exact. I don't even know what I'm doing. So just go for it. And then I'm going to take maybe half. Like if I roll this into a ball, let's say. Let me roll a ball of this so you can actually see two balls. I'm just going for it. Okay, so like that. So maybe three to one. It's not quite half. Okay, and then we're going to mix this up until we got a homogenous mix or a completely unified mix. Probably is a better word to use for everybody to understand. A nice, complete mix. So I don't know, however you want to do this, I tend to roll it out in a sausage 
and then twist it and put it together and twist it and do this over and over and over until I don't see any streaks of the translucent or until most of the translucent is gone. trying to squish any folds really hard so I push the air out just like your rollers would. And I hope this is enough. <laughs> I didn't even really check and see if I have enough black. but That should be enough. If it turns out it's not, I can make a little bit more. So I guess like a one to two or a one to three part mix. <clears throat> one being the translucent. Okay, so that's fairly mixed. So now we need to make like a tapered dome. This might actually not be enough. Like we want, ultimately we want to do this. Okay, let me draw a picture. So this is our Skinner blend. This is our circle right now, and say our, our little white things are up here. It's black, white. Um, in the mix, we want to take a piece of black and put it over like that. Okay. So I do think I'm going to need some more black, so I don't think that's quite going to be enough, but let's try it. So I'm going to roll out a little sausage. I'm going to try to get it roughly to the length of this because I'm working with a small amount. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, set that sausage down, I'm going to begin flattening both sides. And I've done this on other things. I'm not, oh, when I backfill, I do this. So I have a domed top, but two kind of skinnier sides. And then I'm going to curve it a little bit with my fingers. See that? Let me see if this is enough. If I were to set this on here like this, mm -mm. oh, we're gonna put it on this side. I'm such a dummy. We're gonna put it on this side. Sorry, the opposite of the black, because this is gonna be a reflective shadow. And I want to pull these sides up till they go about to this shadow here where the gray, it starts turning gray. God, it's so confusing. I'm sorry guys. It's late too and I did work today. It's hard to get my words out of what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna just deal with this amount. So I'm gonna set that on there. Okay, then I'm gonna start pulling these sides around To see how far up I can actually pull it. I want a nice thin, and I could actually I can make another batch and add a little bit there if I need. But polymer clay is great because you can manipulate it. So just kind of have fun and play. A little off center, so I was trying to get a little more centered. It's kind of like an oval shape right now. But you gotta also think like water droplets or teardrops are very um not always round, they're kind of loose and wobbly. I do want it to come up more, and I'm not gonna be able to get it up to where I want it, so I'm gonna get I'm going to do this on camera so you can see every step of this one because it's kind of confusing. I'm going to get a little black. Hey, if you know how to make this, I'd assume you wouldn't be watching it. Maybe a little less black. This one I'm going to make slightly more translucent, probably equal. Because as it goes up the side, I'll make it. Um, the black will blend more, if that makes sense. Maybe I'll make it a little more translucent. Maybe half and half. Half uh, black, half translucent.
way too much trying to do this out. There we go. Let me mix these together. All I'm going to do is mix these. I'm not going to do anything else but what you just saw me do with mixing them. Okay, I'll be right back. So it's mostly mixed, but I can just see by the tone of it, and you'll see in real life, I'm going to add a little bit more. I just want this to be quite translucent. Not as translucent as like this gray, but not as black as pure black, and not quite as black as that. So, as the one we just added. So it's really going to be playing with this. And again, I don't know how this is going to look when it's baked. I may say, oh, no, I didn't want to add that little extra. You know, so you'll just have to kind of do it and play with it. That's really the best suggestion I can give with polymer clay is just play, experiment, and try. I mean, look, I took a simple technique, the Bargello technique, the other day, and I made out of just that one technique, what was it, five veneers out of it? I mean, come on. You just by playing. So, that one little simple technique. So, just have a good time and enjoy and create. Okay, so I think that's fine. So, I'm going to run this out on a really thin setting just so I don't have to deal with it. Okay, so I have it run ran out on that. Just a really thin setting. I'm gonna cut just roughly to the length here. Not that this matters at all and is not precise. And I wanna put this on. Let me cut this in half too. Cause it's a little skinny and hard to work with. I want to put this on until it's touching the gray layer, okay? Not the full black, the gray and the Skinner blend. So like down here, okay? So, sorry, it's laying funny. So kind of like here, okay? And then just by looking down on it, I can kind of see my other layer was there. No, nope, I kind of cut that off a little skinny. Oh, I just flung that. And there are easier ways to do things. Once I do this, I'll probably find an easier way to do this. Um, if you look at that and go, oh, she should have done it like this, then do it that way totally have free reign with this this is just kind of giving you an idea of how you can do it how you can accomplish it and then go ahead and have fun you know that's all these are about you know they're free tutorials so it's not like you're paying me to watch these you're not losing anything but your time and i'm thinking if you really hated watching them you wouldn't watch them um if you don't like it stop watching it you know you don't you're not no one's forcing you to watch the whole thing if you're getting frustrated with me so just, you know, have fun. Again, if you find an easier way to do it at home, go for it. All the power to you. This is just the best way I can think to do this right now in the midst of me doing it. This is the best way I can think to actually do it for myself. To accomplish the outcome I'm looking for. And I'm just trimming off like it's double layered right there. I'm just kind of trimming it flush with my blade. You know, see, trimming it a little flusher. If that's even a word, flusher. It's sticky. And you can probably remix that with regular black and it'll be totally fine. You know, it'll be slightly translucent, but if you mix it with enough black, you won't even notice. Just cutting off these excess, the excess there. So there is a little gap right there. It's just kind of up to the gray. Okay. So honestly, we're done now. Now we need to reduce. And I'm going to reduce this as a regular circle. Let me just give a quick roll so all my seams are down. So all we're going to do is begin 
pinching with our two fingers, doing gentle pressure. Tap, 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 tap. And I am putting a little less pressure on the dome part because I want it to stay domed in there. So also you can pull. That works great. Pulling on it. You can, we could do a diamond, like with these two fingers, do it like this, do a diamond shape and pinch up like this. Now reducing is probably hard if you're one-handed. And I know I have a lady watching who doesn't have used to her second hand. Honestly, I don't know how you do it, girl. I couldn't imagine. Anytime I've hurt one hand, I've been, I've never broken a bone, but if I've used one, like, I've knocked off my fingernail like three times on one hand and I couldn't even imagine. That was a pain in the ass just to wash my hair. <laughs> so I couldn't imagine trying to work with polymer clay and I commend you for doing that. So this is how I generally reduce. And in this cane, I'm trying to keep it a little mounded here so it's not really anything particular. I'm just pushing and pulling. Pushing and pulling. Definitely working more on the sides to keep it all oblong. Working my way up to the top. And I'm just doing light taps. Tap, 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 tap. The faster you do this, the more distortion you're going to get. It's just ultimately what's going to happen because you're going to push hard one time and then it's going to indent. So the slower you go, the better. The less pressure you put each time, the better. And because we've just been working in this and we didn't have to backfill or anything, it's going to move fairly quickly. My end's a lot fatter than my center. So when you do it like this, it kind of gives you a diamond shape, but to round it back off, just tap those two corners. And we can always round it off like this too later. And once you cut slices, you can really play with this quite a bit. This bottom one where the two white pieces are, I don't want that overly pointy though, so I'm just kind of pushing it down with my finger. It's, it's just one you got to feel out and see how you can stretch it without smushing everything too, too much. I mean, we've already reduced it quite a bit. It was only like an inch tall just a minute ago. You know, as I'm working on one area, like rounding one of the points off, I'm just supporting the other area. I'm not really doing anything with this hand. I'm just kind of pushing with that one. You know, I got kind of a pointy edge. I'm just going to flatten those guys out, bring those out, and then do some nice pulls and rotate. I'm going to work in the middle, and then I'll work over here, work over here. Because if you just pull from the end, the middle is going to get sticky, skinny. So kind of rotate. Move your hands down a little bit, rotate, pull. Again, move down, rotate, pull. This part's a little fatter. And don't worry about your ends because it's not about the end, it's about the middle. And you will see when I see what that middle looks like in a couple minutes. Kind of excited about this one. It might be a fun accent cane. Again, I don't know what I would really use it a lot for, but someone asked and I am gonna attempt it for them. They said they tried it and then they bought a tutorial and they couldn't figure it out or it didn't come out as they expected. It didn't come out bad from what I saw, but they hadn't sliced it yet to see if it actually came out bad or not. 
I would say slice and bake and then make it. And for this, because it's a water droplet and you're probably going to put it on color, put on a, a scrap background and to really see if it's going to come out to what you want. Okay, so those are, that will be like a big water droplet. Are you ready? Yay! Okay. So that's our water drop shape. And what I'll do is I'll probably bake these so you, can get, you guys can see. Okay. So this technically is a shadow down here. The water droplet. Sorry, it keeps not wanting to focus. Let me... Okay. So the water droplet is the circle. The shadow is this part that you get under a water drop. This is the reflection from the light side. Okay. That's what we have. And you can mess with your shape. You know, water blobs, like if you look at them on a, um, a leaf or something, they're not all perfectly round, you know. Some are longer, some are more oval. So you can, you know, when you slice it or right before you slice it, you can mess with your shape. So that's probably my largest one. So I'm going to keep that. Um, and then this one, I'm going to continue reducing down just by, again, pulling on it. And this is, again, a weird kind of reducing one, so I will show you it, and I'm showing the whole thing. This is probably going to be a long video for just a, a cane, but I don't think it'll be... I think it's worth showing these parts. I mean, you can always fast forward if you know what you're doing um, up at the dot at the top on YouTube there's three dots you can hit playback speed and speed me up if you want you can always slow me down too though I'll probably sound like this but you can totally do that <laughs> so overtired what time is it 11 30 p.m. at night which is late when I woke up at 6 a.m. to go to work I'm just stretching down throughout the cane, making it smaller and smaller. So I have different size water droplets. And this would probably be a cool one to get pretty small, you know, so you could have like a cluster of them together. You could make like a leaf pendant, like a pendant, like an actual full pendant just as leaf. You could add it in with your flowers. I was thinking about making an oversized flower, so not a full flower, but just a partial flower, so it looks like you're really, you want to see my drawing? I'm going to show you it, even if you don't want to see it. I was considering making a cane looking like this. This would probably be really cool on one of the petals, so maybe we'll do that one next. Yeah, maybe we'll make a flower like that. Never made one of those either, so maybe we'll do that. So usually the part I bake to put in my book is this part here that's a little distorted but not crazy distorted. Okay, ready? I'm going to cut this one. And then most likely because it's a water droplet, I would do even a smaller one. So that's this one. And what I'll do is I'll bake them and then I'll show you guys what I got. I'll just do these two sizes until I'm positive. I want to go smaller. Most likely I'd take this piece. You know what, screw it, I'll just do it. Let's just do it, why not? Why not? Since I'm working with it right now, I'll only take a second anyways. Especially just pulling on them, they get pretty small pretty quickly. I mean, look, it's already, uh, well, you can't see, but it's already quite a bit skinnier. Not the end, the end's a little fatter, but... I was just stretched the end out to the rest of it. It's already quite a bit skinnier. And at this point, it's gotten quite round. I could probably just round it a little bit or roll it a little bit. Okay, let me just kind of cut the fat end off this one. And because I put that little black log in between the white and the um, the two white dots, it kept them separate. It kept them from mushing in together when I was reducing. You can see that. So what I'll do, let me take this kind of end here. Let me grab a scrap piece of clay. 
first. And I got some ugly color here. This ugly gray blue. Let me zoom back out. Let me take this. Okay. Flatten it out. And that way I have somewhere to put this on. Something to put these droplets on, right? To put in my book. Actually, let me put it on a tile. One of my baking tiles. I ordered these off of Amazon. They're just like four by fours. And then I can fit a couple of these. Let's do this smaller one. And obviously, before you actually go to use a cane, you want to let your canes rest because you'll mush them less. And I want to try to take a thin piece for this one because it is a translucent cane. Fudging with my shape a little bit. And when you stick it on, you can also, by pushing and pulling things, like if you take your blade or a silicone tool, you can. It already looks like a water drop on camera. You can kind of push this around. To get it to do what you want. Okay, there's the small one. And then I'll take a slice of this medium one. Not as thin, but that's okay. Let's leave this one a little oblong. That might be cool. Stick him on. He was a little thick. That one was definitely a little thick. So what I might do, and I do this on pendants too, if I tend not to cut it that great, but this may smear because it's so new. I shave part of it off just to thin it out. I just showed that on my recent cane tutorial. Um, this pendant or pendant tutorial, I showed how you can shave um, your layers off if they get too thick. So there's that one. That's the medium one. Sorry, I got fingerprints. And then let's do the large one. Why not? And then I'll probably take one and bake it on its own. I want to make sure I'm using my blade side. Okay. And that one again got a little weird and I didn't cut it 100%. I skipped some black here which is going to throw off the look. But yeah, no one let me just bake this one alone. Because it's not perfect, but that way I can see it with nothing behind it. And what if I take a little of this black and stick it over here so it looks like it has the shadow all the way around it. All right? let's modify. I know this is stupid for you guys to watch this, but this is how I keep my projects for my future use and know what I did if I have directions, which you saw my directions. Um, I had kind of an idea in my head of how I was going to do it. That way, five years down the road, if I want to do this again, I kind of have an idea of where to go. And guess what? I have a video. <laughs> okay, I'm not doing great cuts, but we're going to go with that because I do not feel like cutting another one. Honestly, I already think they look like water drops on camera. In real life, not quite so much. But on camera, they do. I'm just using the black back of my craft knife here. Just kind of dragging things however I want them. Just kind of cleaning off the edges. Make that one a little wonky. Flatten him off so he's not so thick. 
This is a great time to play to see how you want to manipulate it too for your um, polymer clay book. And then I'm just going to take a piece of uh, parchment just so I can get all my fingerprints off so I can actually appreciate what I made. I'm just going to burnish them off a little bit. And you can actually see it slightly tinted blue. I'm thrilled with this. I don't know about you guys, but I thought that for the first And I've never done this before. I mean, I don't know. My black got a little weird because I added that piece, but... Okay, I'm going to go bake this. And then when it's done, I'll show you it. I'll be back. Okay, so they're now baked and out of the oven, and I will put this in my book. I didn't sand or anything. I did just buff it with my Dremel just a little bit. You know, for, I'm pretty happy with it, I think. So you can definitely see the white down here, and you can see kind of it has a blue tint to it. And then this is the translucent background. I think I would have liked to pull the white up the sides a little bit more at when I was making it a circle, if I would have dragged it up. Ooh, or what would have been cool is kept a little of that one color of translucent and put a really thin layer before we wrap that black around. So if I ever made it again, here's my picture. You know when we were wrapping this black part around? Um, right here, I would have, and we tapered it down to like, this is gray, right in here somewhere. I would have actually taken, kept a piece of the translucent and put a really thin piece of translucent, that white translucent or that whiter translucent. So maybe when you make like a lot, the long, thin, skinny strip, just cut a tiny little bit of the edge off, you know, and save it. So I'll make a note for that because I think it would have given it a little more of a 3D effect if this white came up around a little bit rather than just a black border to have a little white shimmer along the edge. And I think what I'll do next is make like a little reflection star or a white star that we can reduce down really tiny and put like a couple little shimmers or or something on it. You don't need to do that. It could just be like a plain white star and you can use it in different ways to merge seams and all kinds of things. But what I'll do is I'll, I'll make a note. This is my instructions on this one. And I would say put mix translucent black, put on white side slightly touches the gray so make a circle I'll say Skinner blend log keep small amount of white and before fan fold and then Right here, make the circle, add little white um, up to the gray. Add a little white up to gray. So if this is our circle, right? We have the white dots here say so add a little white, a thin layer of that white translucent right around here and then add the black on top of that if that makes sense. That's probably what I would modify in it but other than that I'm pretty thrilled with it so Anyways, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. If it was, please um, like, share. If you have any questions, comment. 
Also, join my group, my Facebook page. It's Katie's, K-A-T-I-E, apostrophe S, Polymer Clay Friends on Facebook. Um, join me there. I'd like to see what you make with these techniques and how you modify them. And I'd love to just see how, how you run with it. Uh, that would be great. So, join me on Facebook. If not, give me a thumbs up, like, share. That always helps me to see if people are watching and what they like or if you write comments um, please share it in other polymer clay groups that you may be in just because if it was helpful for you it may be helpful for someone else so even if just a part of it was helpful anyways I'm just adding it to my little polymer clay book here and I will call this my water drop I just kind of tape them on there like that and then I have this in my polymer clay creations book so I will talk to you guys next time have a good one